So this is the instructions or lesson notes for the first week assignment. And these are our objectives. This is the same screen capture basically from the lecture material for the course content under week one. And um, you should have already set up, um, uh, downloaded the software and already set up the, uh, the file management structure that I gave you instructions on here. So um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, cover these objectives um, and just record some concept videos that help you work through this assignment. So uh, let's start with the first one, demonstrate an understanding of proper steps to start a new drawing file. And so I'm gonna um, open up AutoCAD 2020. Um, if you've downloaded this properly and you have an icon on your, on your uh, homepage like this, Got a lot of things open. You should be able to just click on that icon and it opens up, okay? And this is where uh, we don't have a drawing open yet. So this is uh, kind of think of it as the home page. And your most recent documents will be shown here. These are sample files, which I would suggest you take a look at, just poke around. And then you have a getting started section over here. Um, and I wanna show you that if we click on the down arrow here, we have, um, Whole bunch of templates that have already been predefined for you and uh, at the bottom of the list are the ones we're going to use the most because we really want you to learn how to make your own layers your own line types your own styles as you work through this so you become a, the best autocad user possible with good practices um, so we're going to start with either no template imperial or no template metric so you make a choice between one or two of those so imperial would be feet inches fractions uh, yards those are all imperial units and metric would be millimeters, meters, uh, centimeters. Those are metric units. So depending on the drawing assignment, you will know by um, looking at the drawing whether or not it should be an imperial drawing start or a metric drawing start. So that's the first thing you're gonna look at. Um, and if you click on that, it should just open up a new drawing file. So I'm gonna click on imperial and um, give it a second. It's gonna open up a drawing file and you're gonna see what that looks like. So the uh, very next instruction on the page, and the one that I'm referencing is the one that um, we're using here um, on your instructions. If you go to lecture material for this, we look at your instructions. This is the instruction. So this is your drawing uh, startup checklist. So we just did the uh, picked imperial, okay? Next, we want to dock the command line. What is that? This is the command line right here. You want to either take that and put it up here. That's where I'm going to put mine. Or if you prefer to have it down below, you can drag it down below. But it's docked when it's kind of shoved up into the, into above the ribbon. So that's docking the command line. And just to sh uh, explain what we're looking at here up here, you have uh, the different uh, more commonly used um, uh, op uh, op start a new file, open an existing file, save a file, save a file and name it. Um, and then you have, um, you know, some web mobile uh, things here and then print. And then just below that, I've decided to put the command line. And then below that, we call this the ribbon. And this is content driven. So we click on these different tabs, different information shows up. So pay attention to the tab I'm on when I'm um, demonstrating a video. And then you have two drawings here. Well, you got to start drawing. We can start a new drawing again and you've got drawing one. Notice that um, AutoCAD na automatically names drawings to begin with, drawing one, drawing one.dwg. So you never want to name a drawing, drawing one, because you will save over it. So we're going to have naming conventions that I'll explain later when we get into uh, um, uh, the next few steps. And then down here we have model, layout, and layout two. And these will be explained a lot more when we get into setting up drawings for printing and stuff like that. Down here we have a status bar. And um, we have a little uh, navigation uh, bar right here, which we might end up shutting off for the 2D drawing formats. And then we have just our regular drawing layout here. So let's take a look at the next step. We've docked our command line. All right, so the next thing is to make sure that uh, O-Snaps, O-Track, and Polar Tracking are turned on and use the hamburger menu to uh, also turn on dynamic input and line weights to, into the status bar. And then we, we need to turn off dynamic input, and then I'm gonna show you how we can 
uh, toggle line weights on and off, although it won't really demonstrate very well without a drawing in it, but we'll do, you'll see that later. So these are the uh, things you're looking for here. You're looking for um, the status bar shows you grid, snaps, and this is your uh, um, polar tracking you want turned on. You have uh, O tracking you want turned on, and your object snaps you want turned on. Now, um, for your object snaps, you should have endpoint, midpoint, so see I had to turn that on, center, intersection, and extension typically for every drawing. Okay. And then the other things that are missing from here that I'd like you to add, this is the hamburger button, or it's going to customizing. I call that a hamburger button. And you want to turn on dynamic input and line weights. And that will give you additional information here at all times. And you can see that dynamic input is on right now. I'm going to toggle it off by just clicking it off. And then we have line weights on and off as well, which we'll see when we start drawing something. So let's look at the next step. Determine the layers and line types required for drawing and create um, uh, create those layers uh, in line weights and make sure that you're using your layers to control those settings. So um, just kind of a generic approach to this, what I've got included in here in your instructions is a picture of a, a typical drawing. Let me rotate that um, clockwise. And um, it's a good drawing to include is in your um, references because it shows you what the line types are by calling out the line types with these leaders. So these are called leaders. So um, if I'm looking at a drawing, once you learn what these line types are, you can determine what layers you need because I'm going to be creating a layer for each one of these different line types. So I need a phantom layer. I need a leader or a dimension layer. I need a viewing plane layer. I need a center line layer. Um, I need a text layer for all the text that's showing up on this. I need a dimensions layer for all the dimensions that are showing up here. Um, so uh, as we go through drawings, I will, I will help you to determine what layers need to be there by talking you through it, but eventually get to a point where you'll know what you need for layers. In addition to some of the layers we're discussing here, you're probably going to need a viewports layer, and maybe a uh, construction layer. So for things when you, you know, drawing something out, you don't want it to be part of the drawing, you want it to be on a separate layer so you can turn it off or set it to no print. So I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick how to create a layer. First of all, we have to be on the home tab and I'm gonna click on layer properties because we only have a zero layer. You wanna avoid drawing on that layer. So I'm gonna click on layer properties and that's gonna open up the layer dialog box. Everything can be docked. And you want to be careful of that because that might frustrate you and um, get this uh, thing to go where you don't want it to. So you can always grab it by this bar here. And I'm just going to right click on it and turn off the allow docking. And then I'm going to click on this auto hide so that it just collapses when I put it off to the side. And I can then just move my cursor over it and expands the layer manager um, window when I need it. So to create a new layer, we're going to click on new. And then I'm just going to type in the layer name. So one of the more um, common layer names you'll have to make is objects for object lines. And we're going to keep that as white. Now colors, if I wanted to change the color, this is the Auto Autodesk or AutoCAD colors. This color is color number seven. It's special. It will be white when it's on a black screen. It will be black when it's on a white screen. So make sure you're using color number seven for your object layer. And then for line weight, we can control the line weight um, and object lines are supposed to be uh, 0.5. So create a 0.5 line weight. And now we've got a layer that I'm gonna use for all my object lines in my drawing or my visible lines. That's another uh, way to refer to these lines. And I would create different line uh, uh, layers for each line type. So I'm gonna create one more. And this one's gonna be for center lines. And I'm going to create a color that I'd like to use for center lines. It's going to be this pink magenta color. The line weight for a center line is thin. So I'm going to set it to um, the uh, 0.2 line type. And um, then uh, we need to load a different line uh, type. So I've got a, a C here. It says continuous, meaning it's just going to be a straight pattern line. I'm going to load. And I only have continuous lines here as a option, but I'm going to load 
uh, from the ACAD LIN file. There's a different file, by the way, if you've started this in a metric drawing. If it says ACAD ISO dot LIN, then you've started the wrong template and you need to go back and start in an imperial. So I'm going to load the center line type here, center two, in fact, to see the patterns change. Get a little longer pattern here, a shorter pattern there. Center two makes that a shorter pattern. I like that one better. And then I'm going to make sure that that line type is associated with that layer. So when I'm done, I now have two layers, object layer, a center layer, different color, different line type, different line weight. And it's all be control, being controlled by the layers. So that's the basics on line, uh, creating layers. So let's go back up to the checklist here. We'll rotate this counterclockwise here. So we're now on create textile that's not standard. So let's create a textile in here. I'm going to type in um, style. And as I start typing, AutoCAD's going to try to figure out what it thinks I'm typing. For some reason, it's slowing up here a little bit. And it's going to run through the commands, and it will start. Let me do that again so you can see. If I start typing, it will show me the, the different commands that are associated with that uh, uh, alias, if you will. So please don't continue typing. If you see your command, click on that command, and it will start that command up. Now, I don't want you to use standard as a name. That's, that's going to be a, um, a, a hit on your drawing if you do that. So we're going to create a new drawing, a new style, and let's call it my initials so we know I created it. And I'm going to use Roman S as a font. Okay, so I've got my own style here, and I'm going to pick Roman S as a font, and I want to find Roman S here real quickly. It can start typing R-O, and there's Roman S. Now, I have a choice of making this annotative, um, and I'm going to turn that on, and then I'm going to set a paper text height of 0.125 inches, or an eighth of an inch. This will be explained a little bit more later on, but what annotative allows you to do is basically set one text, and it will uh, change to a different sizes based on the scale of the drawing. And then that will make a lot more sense when we start doing drawings that are to scale, okay? So we'll hit apply and close. And now I have a, uh, a font that I can use, a text style that I can use. If I click here and click on text, um, I'm sorry, click here and put under annotate and click on text. Uh, let me see if it's gonna let me do it here. Um, it's gonna ask me if I want it to be annotative one-to-one -one, and that all depends on the drawing you're working on. So this answer might change depending on the drawing you're working out throughout the semester. But most of the drawings we do in the beginning are one-to-one. -one. And then uh, you can see I've got uh, MBC Roman S is the default text that's being used. So I can create a box that uh, allows me to start typing inside that text box and I can say this is Roman S font. And that's it. Once I click off of the top the, the box, then I can pick that up, move it around. I can also adjust the size of it and collapse it. There's other types of text. We have uh, uh, M text or multi-line text, and then you have regular text called D text or just text. If I type in DT, you'll see D text shows up in the command line. And if I pick a spot, and enter through the questions that are being shown up here, then I can say this is D text. And when I hit enter twice, then I've got just a single line of text when I'm done. And that's the kind of text we're gonna use for this first assignment. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We have to save the file to appropriate folder name after assigning and then begin a drawing. Remember to save often. So I'm going to show you how to do those two things. So let's pretend this is all set up now and you've got all your layers set, set up for the first assignment. You would um, uh, do a uh, save as. So this is the save as button. And you're going to save it into the file structure that I had you create in an early folder. We're going to do a work in progress for this because it's probably not ready to be graded. And depending on the assignment number, you're going to put in your initials first. So mine are NBC. And then uh, just put in the assignment number. So the assignment number in this case is 1A. Okay. And then we hit save. 
in work in progress. And then up here at the top, you're going to see the file uh, name and, uh, and number show up, showing you that you've saved it properly. And then let's check to see what is the default um, save time for automatic saves. So I typed in options to get into this. I may have done that quickly, but there you go. You can always look at my command line in the videos and see what I did. So if I start typing slowly, if I just type OP, options comes up. And I want to look to see where um, what's happening with automatic save. There's the automatic save. You definitely want that checked off. And mine is set to 10 minutes, which I like. Now, I wouldn't recommend you set that any more than 15 minutes because if you lose a file, then that way you will lose no more than 15 minutes of your time. OK, if it's like something happens, AutoCAD and shuts down. The other thing to take note of is where are these files being stored? We go under files and we look to see um, where our automatic save file location is. Let's hit the plus sign next to that. On your home computer, it, notice where it's located. It's in users, in your username, app data, local temp. So if you ever have to retrieve a, um, an automatic save file, that's where you're going to find it. And it's going to have an AC dollar sign extension. So the way to um, uh, turn an, auto, an automatic save file back into a DWG file is when you find the file, you're just going to add the .dwg extension to it. OK, and again, I'll show you that a little later on in some of the other um, uh, videos, but this is the basics. And so that, I think, sums up what you need to know about um, setting up a new drawing. Um, this checklist that we have here is going to be important to remember. And uh, notice at the end here, you're going to have a few more steps once we learn a little bit more about AutoCAD and start making more um, elaborate drawings.